Welcome. I am Bully. And I'm Manny Morales. We're Table Golf, and today we're going to talk about blood. Specifically, um, the hunger and feeding and blood generation and blood potency, which is just scratching the surface because obviously it's a vampire game. There's a lot of things that blood incorporates in this. We're going to break it down chunk by chunk, and this is that first blood chunk. Speaking of blood, if you want dice, that is cool blood splatter effect. Yeah, effect, not real blood splatter. You should click our link and get some vampire dice from Level Up Dice, which has just that, so then people know you're playing vampire because your blood has dice on them. Wait, your dice has blood on them, <laughs> as every good vampire player does. Oi. So to understand the mechanics of how blood and feeding works in the game, it helps to understand a little bit of the lore and story reasons behind blood. Blood is not only the one thing that your character is going to be drinking to stay alive or undead, like every good vampire mythology does, um, but also it's what powers your disciplines and abilities and all that supernatural vampire stuff you can do, you can do because of the blood in your body. So this game has a way of tracking the blood in your body, and it has a way of understanding the, the hunger dice works where you always need more blood. You can very rarely be fully satiated. So it has a way of keeping track of that and understanding what happens when you get too hungry and all the things you could do when your blood is a little better than other people's blood. Alrighty, so we'll start with hunger. Um, hunger is measured in levels ranging from zero to five. A hunger of zero means that the vampire is fully satiated, um, completely satisfied. And then a hunger five means the kindred can barely think about anything else except for feeding. Um, and that's when issues with the beast start taking over, um, because they're ravenous. Uh, a typical kindred has at least one hunger, um, representing the constant thirst of the beast and a reminder of what they really are. The only way to get a hunger rating of zero is to drain a human completely, um, and that means killing them and drinking the last spark of life. Once at hunger five, every failed rouse check triggers a hunger frenzy test. If a vampire attempts to rise for the night with a hunger of five and fails a rouse check, they enter torpor. And that's that's a long that's a long session when you're out of that for torpor, torpor. session. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. We've had a couple of those. I haven't. I mean, I haven't. So Not to we don't names. know anything about I mean, it then. Our it's other quite players a session. Might. <laughs> Um, and then uh, remember that with the, the higher hunger, that me, the more likely you are to roll a messy critical or a visual failure. Um, and depending on the source uh, of your blood, blood can have a resonance, which is sort of a flavoring or an essence um, that some vampires prefer and can give bonuses to certain disciplines, which is super cool. Um, this is a bit complicated, but um, we'll cover it in a later video. So basically the strategy behind managing your hunger rating is that, like you said, the hungrier you are, the more likely you're, any regular role is going to turn into something crazy with the blood, the beast taking over and doing things. So you can never run out of blood. You can stay super hungry. You can frenzy, but you're never, you always will have blood in your body to do things with, to use your powers and whatnot. Um, it just might get out of your control. And a rouse check is any check it's either a success or a fail that's it and that's to see if something you do using the powers of the blood makes you hungrier so using certain disciplines just waking up for the night a lot of other things it will say rouse check what that means is you roll one dice sometimes it's better where certain disciplines allow you roll multiple dice for rouse check and as long as you succeed on any of them you do not get hungrier um, sometimes every time you use a power or wake up and you roll if you fail that means you do get hungrier so that's the only way to get hungrier is through using the blood. So if you're if you know you're hungry and it's dangerous to rouse the blood, you might want to hold back on using mm -hmm. some of your powers because you don't want to push your hunger limit over that five. If you go into a hunger frenzy, uh, the vampire will seek fresh human blood from the closest source. Um, the frenzy ends when kindred reaches hunger one or below, and on occasion they may try to drink from other kindred. Um, if that's the only available source. We'll cover all the types of frenzy in a later video. Slaking hunger. A vampire needs to drink from people, from animals, from other kindred. 
Uh, and they have a few tricks of doing this in order to uh, lower their hunger. Um, vampire fangs produce a supernatural intoxicating effect on their victims. By licking a bite wound that they created, a vampire can also close the wound as if nothing happened. Um, if a kindred does not take too much blood and takes their time to clean up, a victim may just remember the feeling of a drug trip, a uh, otherworldly sexual encounter, or just a general delirious fog with little physical evidence suggesting otherwise. Of course, they will feel anemic or worse depending on how much blood they lost. This method of feeding takes time, but keeps the masquerade and is the most common method used by kindred. Um... Do you want to talk about another common feeding method? Whatever do you mean? I uh, remember when your character uh, called to have pizza delivered. <laughs> <laughs> and the delivery man went to their house. Listen, they went and hid in coerced. the pizza guy's back of his seat. And I was bit coerced. him when he came back out. Because one of my biggest fears is someone being in the backseat of my car to murder me. And here I was in the backseat of this pizza delivery man's car. I just need delivery. So you can have blood delivered to you by calling <laughs> just any sort of food delivery and then waiting in their car to feed from them. It's actually really convenient, though. I felt it was clever. It's a really good idea. Weirdly, it felt more evil than, like, all these other, like... <laughs> and I also love how anticlimactic it is. Like, we have the examples of, like, you seduce your victim. You know, you have all these ideas yeah. of, like, a vampire feeding and what that means. It's like means. a stoner movie. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a stoner vampire move is you call up a pizza dude, <laughs> sneak into the car and buy him. Oh, God. So feeding isn't always super cool and sexy. Sometimes it's kind of sad just and funny. a necessity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, just is. <laughs> Kindred can also feed from animals. Animals typically do die when fed from, but they don't reduce hunger to zero. An animal the size of a large dog could perhaps be spared if a vampire was careful and only slaked like one hunger. The animal would still be badly injured though from severe blood loss, so you would actually be a monster if you drank from a dog. The higher a kindred's blood potency, the less potent the animal blood actually is. Uh, eventually, animal blood does not slake hunger at all. Bagged blood is also an option for kindred to get sustenance from. Uh, most fully processed bag blood is useless to kindred since it has been fractionated. The iron gullet merit allows a kindred to get sustenance from it, though. Uh, unprocessed bag blood can slake hunger, but like animal blood, has no resonance and its effects diminish with a higher blood potency. A vampire can also drink from other vampires. Uh, drinking from another vampire, your hunger gets reduced by as much as their hunger gets increased. So instead of drinking from them and hurting them, you're really just trading hunger. Um, a drinker slakes one point of hunger for each point of increased hunger inflicted on the victim. Uh, feeding from a vampire at least two levels of blood potency higher than a drinker slakes two points of hunger for each point inflicted. And then that works vice versa too. If you're feeding from someone with a lower blood potency than you, at least two levels, two levels lower um, for every one hunger you get, their hunger increases by two. There's a few special things that go along with drinking from other vampires, though. Uh, for one, it's the only way to learn disciplines, vampire powers, outside of your starting powers or your clan powers. You have to drink from another vampire whose blood possesses those powers, and then you can learn them later. Typically, feeding three separate times from the same kindred within the span of a year creates a blood bond. This is a supernatural servitude that a bound thrall feels towards the one they drink from. So it's an inherent risk with drinking from other kindred, and it's something some kindred do on purpose to control others. If you drain another vampire completely, that's called a diablerie. It has a fancy dramatic name because it's a dramatic, terrible thing in the vampire lore. Uh, completely draining another kindred is seen as one of their big sins, and you'll be labeled a diablerist, which actually stains your aura to a kindred who can read auras and things like that. Um, but it's something that can be a quick way to gain new powers. Um, but it's also, if you drain a vampire, their blood can take over your blood, which means you can be taken over by whoever you try to feed from if you drain them completely. Um, we'll get into more of the full Diablo rules, Diablo re rules <laughs> later. We've mentioned blood potency, which we will talk about, but before we get into that, you have to sort of understand a, a vampire's generation. Generation is what determines your potency most of the time. 
Uh, vampire generation refers to how many embraces they are separated from the original vampire, which in the Vampire the Masquerade mythos is Cain. So that means the second generation of vampires are the ones that Cain embraced. The third generation of vampires are the ones that he embraced, embraced, and so on and so forth. The third generation, those are called the Antediluvians. Those are the founders of the 13 clans. Um, just to show you sort of how low a generation means in power and age. Most player characters are going to be starting at 12th or 13th generation, which means that's how far they are separated from the Vamp Daddy. Generations 14th and on are considered thin bloods. They have a blood potency of zero, and they're sort of like half vampires. We'll get into them later, but essentially they, they have some of the vampire abilities, um, but they lack a lot of them. But they also lack some of the vampire weaknesses. And that's the idea of that is the blood so diluted, so far removed from the original cursed source that it lacks some of those abilities. And generation and potency sort of work inversely. The lower your generation, the higher, the more potent your blood probably is. Meaning the further you are from Cain, the more diluted your blood is from the pure kindred vitae. Lore-wise, the more potent your blood, the more inhuman it is. Like it's literally like thicker, viscous, like monster blood. Which is interesting and also sort of works with their diablerizing um it actually takes like physical strength to gobble down this really thick <laughs> gross blood if you're trying to diablerize an older kindred so while the more potent your blood is um the more powers you will have but it also is more difficult to sate your hunger um things like animal blood no longer will slate your hunger bag blood will never slay your hunger even eventually humans won't even actually get your hunger down where you only can feed from other vampires once your blood is so potent. Each generation has a minimum blood potency and a maximum blood potency. Um, a kindred can increase their blood potency by one every hundred years while active, but intense experiences or exposure to extremely potent blood can speed this process up, which is sort of the story reason of you can actually use experience points to increase your blood potency by whatever is allowed in your generation's maximum. Uh, this means a couple things. This means that if your the kindred's just hanging out and doing their thing and their blood potency is raising, it'll eventually reach its cap, which means they'll have to raise their or lower their generation if they want to raise their blood potency. Um, you lower your generation by diablerizing a vampire of a lower generation than you. Doesn't matter how much lower they are, you, they are than you. Um, just diablerizing one will decrease your generation by one. So if a 12th generation vampire manages to diablerize a 5th generation vampire, they'll then become 11th generation. This also means that if you do that, you diablerize and your generation lowers, uh, your blood potency might automatically go up if you're now suddenly on the, if you had a low blood potency and now you're a new generation that has a higher minimum blood potency, you automatically get that minimum. So blood potency in general, in mechanical terms affects uh, a lot of things actually. It affects how many dice you get when you blood surge. It affects how much damage you can mend per rouse check. Um, it adds bonus dice applied to your disciplines. Um, it affects your ability to reroll rouse checks, that rouse checks you'll make by using your disciplines. This affects your bane severity, and it also affects your feeding penalty. Blood potency one is typically what players start with. That's the minimum for 12th and 13th generation. Uh, blood potency 5 is considered like a very powerful elder. Uh, above blood potency 5 you're considered like godlike and you're probably affected by the beckoning which is in the lore this thing that pulled all the really old powerful vampires towards the Middle East to fight the even older more powerful vampires. It's a whole thing but basically it means don't expect to get above blood potency 5. Uh, the chart will show it which will show you chart in a second and that's mostly for storyteller reasons. Okay on to charts. This chart is the generation chart that just shows the, the generation, the minimum blood potency, the maximum blood potency. Um, stops at fourth because no one should be playing or dealing with the antediluvians. But if you want to, you can figure that out. But yeah, this just sort of shows what you follow and how your blood changes as your generation changes. And here we have the handy blood potency chart. This shows all of the things that your blood potency level affects. Um, we'll get into what blood surge, damage, mend, damage mending, and all that is. Um, those are some of the blood abilities you can do, which will be a whole other video. But essentially, you can do those abilities better. You get more dice for them, the higher your blood potency is. 
Um, a discipline rouse check reroll means if you fail your rouse check, you just get to reroll it again. Level one means you can only reroll level one discipline powers and then so on. Level two, which is where most of the rouse checks come into play, you'll be able to reroll those. This means the higher blood potency, um, the less likely you are to get hungry while using your powers, which is nice. Bane severity, each clan has a bane severity. We get into that when we get into the clans, but essentially those are negatives that come into effect when like your clan compulsion kicks in. And the higher your potency is, the more connected you are to that clan founder, the worse that drawback will be. This is really the only, well, one of the only bad parts about having high blood potency is your bane severity is worse and the feeding penalty, which is our next thing, which just pretty much shows that the more inhuman and crazy strong your blood is the harder it is to feed you have to start feeding from um like i said eventually animals won't do it bag blood won't do it and eventually even humans won't do it and then here we have the feeding chart um it shows sources like blood bag animal human so on horse horse <laughs> also <laughs> is there in case you're the equestrian that's in the book. Leaning. We didn't add that. No, it's definitely there. Uh, you know, how much hunger slake you can get from that, how long it takes, um, and a couple additional notes um, on that whole situation. Yeah, so this is probably the one you'll be referring to a lot for, because, I mean, feeding takes time, where I think it's, you think of, like, a vampire grabbing someone in the alley, feeding them from them real quick, and then going. This is showing, I know it actually takes a little bit of time if you're like, safely feed from something. Um, there are abilities that let you feed from someone faster, but you're typically killing people when you do that. Covers this part about the blood stuff. There's a lot of blood stuff. It's a vampire game. There's a lot of blood material. Lot of blood stuff. So we got like multiple videos we're going to have to do just for blood. I thought I could do it all in one. I can't. A lot so of this, blood chunks. A lot of blood chunks. Um, we'll get into rouse checks, rousing the blood and powers of the blood, what those are. We'll get into different drinking blood things. What happens when you drink from other kindred, meaning like the full Diablery rules, the full the full uh, blood bond rules, and ghouling things with your blood. We'll get into all of that. So get ready for more blood stuff. Now we just want to cover the basic, what the blood is, how the beast... We didn't even talk about the beast. The beast is... We touched on a little we bit. We touched a little, a little We little talked bit. about another stuff. Hoped it. That's the, the, the angry part of your blood that makes you do stuff. But yeah, this is the basics. Your hunger. How to get less hungry. Generation. We found out the most powerful part of a vampire, which is... I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Their tummy. So that's where yes. you keep the blood. Which I thought was weird. I always thought of the blood as like just in your system type of thing. But I think it specifically talks about like... The blood just sitting in your stomach, and that's where the beast is gurgling around. That could be another video. Uh, no, it won't be. But yeah. We could talk about how you equated, like, the first vampire to Cain when we all know it's Lilith. We can get into heresy and all that and what it entails as well. That's for later, though. This was some of the basic introduction to oh, how teaser. the blood works. Ah, teaser. This is a full video. Thank you very much. It's a good uh, teaser. But it is a teaser for other videos that are coming. But yeah, that's it. That's blood. If you have blood questions, we're probably going to answer them later. But you can still ask them now. Help us prep. I'll, I'll answer them as many times as I need to. <laughs> Anything else? No. Yeah, okay. That's it. Bye. I'm Bully. And I'm Mandy Bro. <laughs> I about something else. Okay, start <laughs> You felt something else. I was thinking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about where the camera was before. Now you moved it and how I hadn't realized until now. Okay. Okay. It's one of those. Alright. <laughs> uh, this is so fun. Do you have an acting background? Shut up. I don't know what's going on. I can't do that. You have to talk now. You have liquor in your cup too? No. Oh, man. I don't know what's wrong. But I was being weird because I had a couple beers today. Maybe that's my problem I don't have. <laughs> we'll cover more types of hunger frenzy in a later video. All, all types of frenzy. Well, uh, mm. <laughs> let me say it one more time. We'll cover... <laughs> Wait, so since I Diablo is that one serial killer... Is she a lower generation than me? 
Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Dude, raccoon is considered a medium-sized animal, along with dog and coyote. A raccoon. Yeah. I see some big raccoons. Dude, there's some big possums that live in my neighborhood. They're so cute. Oh, I do not like possums. Oh, I love possums.